Yeah. Okay, you're too young to remember All in the Family, which is the breakthrough comedy probably of all time. And in the song that Archie and Edith sang before each episode, they talk about Mr. We Could Use a Man like Herbert Hoover again. But it's lost on you. What, what a brain. Say? Welcome yeah. to PTI, boys and girls. Wilbon couldn't even make it to Thursday. I am pleased to be joined by our great friend, the host of the podcast, Pablo Torre Finds Out, Mr. Pablo Torre. That's nice. And we begin today with the traditional rite of spring, baseball's opening day. There are 26 teams playing today, including matchups between the Yankees and Astros, the Giants and Padres, and Wilbon's Cubs, and the defending World Series champion Rangers. Pablo, I'm not asking you to pick winners. I'm asking mm. for your biggest questions about teams or players in the season ahead. I'm going to stay local. I'm going to stay navel gazy, Tony. I'm thinking about the Yankees. And I'm thinking about the AL East, honestly, which is seemingly a division unlike any other, perhaps in professional sports right now, given how good it was last year. And so this year, I'm thinking right. about how the Yankees had the worst season I've ever experienced in my lifetime. That was last season, right? I had to look up and see the Orioles and the Rays and the Jays and everybody. And now I'm thinking to myself, okay, how good would it feel if the Red Sox finished in last place for a third consecutive season? And I'm like, okay, pretty good. But really what I'm thinking is this team with Juan Soto, this team with Garrett Cole, who is suddenly injured, we need to win a World yeah. Series or all of this is actually just miserable. It's a binary experience for me. This question and this season with the Yankees. I love that you said we. I hadn't seen you with the uniform yeah. on, but maybe you have one in the, felt, in the trunk of your car. Like I got a uniform, itself. a Washington Nats yeah. uniform <laughs> behind me. Okay, in baseball this year, Pablo, everything starts with the Dodgers. You know, and not just Shohei Itani. There's Mookie Betts, there's Freddie Freeman, there's Yamamoto. Is Yamamoto as advertised, or are we going to see more of what he did in an actual game against the Padres Bad. when he lasted just one inning and he gave up five earned? And I know I said it's more than just Otani, but to be fair, it is mostly Otani. Mostly Otani. And it is complicated now by the fact that we aren't quite sure what happened with the money in his bank accounts. So and we yep. aren't quite sure what the interpreter has done and what he is accused of. Of doing, and we aren't quite sure who bet and who didn't bet. You know, and, and so that that's all out there. I think the, the Dodgers, more so than the Yankees, are a rock band, and it was going to be like a big name rock band all year, but now maybe they're a big name rock band being pursued by the sheriff a little bit. You know, we yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, there's a bit of cruel irony here, Tony. It's a great point by you. We've been crying out for, I use We the Royal We now, having Rob Manfred as part of this collective. We've been wondering, when are we going to get Shohei Otani as the face of baseball? Well, we kind of have it now. It's just under these, these auspices yeah. that are the absolute nightmare scenario for, you know, the genie's wish that gets granted, except, oh, right, there's this wrinkle. It's going to be from a perspective of everything, everything being ruined with him as your star. But I suppose we should move to the Sixers because uh, they got hosed by the refs last night, Tony. They were down one with just seconds left. Phillies Kelly Oubre drove. He appeared to be fouled by Paul George of the Clippers, but nothing got called. And all that set off Sixers coach Nick Nurse, who had to be restrained. And after the game, officiating crew chief Kevin Scott admitted to Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer that after reviewing the play on video, a foul should have been called on Paul George. And so, Tony, should the league have some way to address this kind of mistake in the moment, as opposed to just having everybody eat it? So how many times have we seen this recently? I'm going to go back just about a month. This happened to the Knicks. There was a foul call with the Knicks, and it cost them the particular game, and they protested the game, and the league pretty much laughed at them. And then within a week or 10 days, the Pistons got hosed, and the Knicks were the beneficiary of it because a Knicks player was not called for a foul, and they were allowed to go down the court and make the winning basket. And now we have this thing last night, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a foul. You, you can't say to me he didn't get a Correct. shot off before the buzzer rang or something like that. No, he was impeded on his way to do whatever he was going to try to do. And that's a foul. And nothing happens. The referees pick up the ball and they run off the court. And, and there's an integrity of the game issue right here that is made worse by all the gambling that all the leagues sponsor Pablo, yes. there's got to be a way to review 
last second plays that determine the winner of a game. Just that. I don't want to go back five minutes. Last second plays. I fully agree. And when it comes to integrity, the stakes are just higher. You mentioned the gambling money. That is the foremost reason. The complaints on top of that, the mistrust that fans have about basketball officials, basketball officials, right? This is the hardest game to referee. I've long believed that. Anything could conceivably be a foul, depending on who's doing it, the time and the place. It's complicated. It, too, is like jazz. It's free form, how the whistle gets deployed. But the last second, last five seconds, last ten seconds, you got to yeah. have the yeah. ability to review this. And I know the slippery yeah. slope argument, right? If there's not a call, then you can protest everything under the sun. But I believe the constraint you've laid out is the most reasonable solution. The only other one I have is if you, if you mess it up, you can't find the guys complaining about it. And Kelly Oubre <laughs> earned the fine he's going to get. So choose which one you like. I'm just going to say this quickly. The N NBA is a mess right now. You've got players actually saying that referees are making calls for money. You've got a player being looked at as to whether he manipulated that game for gambling purposes, and you Dante can't Porter. get the endings of games right. Where's Adam Silver on this one? Honestly, you've got to come out. It's an integrity issue. Uh, let's move on. And because this is a day ending and why, we're going to talk about the Warriors. And, of course, <laughs> we're going to throw in the Lakers as well on this show. Let's start with Draymond Green getting thumbed four minutes into last night's win over Orlando. Steve Kerr said Green's early ejection does not erode his confidence in Green. Pablo, does it erode yours? I, I know that Steve Kerr has to say this, even though it's ridiculous. Everybody's confidence in Draymond Green, anybody who can see or hear has at least one of the five senses knows that this guy is <laughs> untrustworthy. You can't count on what he says. You can't count on anything but what he shows you. And we know who he is. Tony, just look at how Steph reacted as soon as Draymond got ejected. He looked like you being asked to discuss Summer League, right? Like, this was a guy <laughs> almost weeping into his jersey. Almost, and I mean that literally, weeping. And so the Warriors are terrified of not making even the play-in. Steph knows what he has to do. He knows who he can't count on anymore and that is what's been breaking his heart so this is interesting because i too was completely taken when i saw that this morning with steph curry's reaction it seemed to me that steph curry was saying oh no here we go again and he's going to be suspended now he shouldn't be suspended for what he did he didn't hit anybody he shouldn't be suspended but you Agreed. could see steph curry basically thinking we're sunk I saw this this morning, and I saw it without sound, and so I didn't really have context on it, and I wondered immediately, would Draymond Green get suspended? And, and it seemed to me he shouldn't. Yeah, he shouldn't get suspended because he's been suspended for physical altercations. He, and I know he's a recidivist, and I know he's on a short leash, but he should have the same rights as other NBA players to yell at referees and just get thrown out. Get thrown sure. out, get fined, but, but not get suspended. And, and I, I, I'm always worried about the time, so indulge me on this. Don't let me leave without the Lakers. The Lakers won last <laughs> night. They beat Memphis. It's their fifth in a row, their longest streak of the season. LeBron had a triple-double. So now I can ask you, between the Lakers and the Warriors, which is going to go on a run? And you can come back and say to me, they're both going to make the finals. I believe that the NBA mathematics have not changed. I believe if you have the best player on the court, you are likely to make a run. The Warriors have Steph Curry. The Lakers have LeBron. But here's the thing, Tony, with the Warriors, right? The Houston Rockets are breathing down their necks. They've won 10 in a row, 12 of 13. Yeah. And the Warriors, we should point this out, they won this game against the Magic. They won it because of Steph Curry, because he went night-night down the length of the floor, because that's who he is. It's the deus right. ex machina of the NBA. They have him, so they should be okay. What I'm worried about is just how that guy feels about, the, about what he has to work with. It's lonely being Steph right now, Tony, and that, from a longer-term perspective than just this season, has to be horrifying for Warriors fans.
I, I, I'm just going to say this, that Draymond Green, I believe the statistic I got today, when he's now played in 36 games since he was suspended, and he hasn't done anything really flagrant. So I think maybe you can count on, on him a little more than you think, but we'll see. Let's take a break. Okay. Coming up, four Sweet 16 games tonight. We're going to ask Jay Billis whether UConn or North Carolina could be vulnerable. And whether Purdue or Houston could fall tomorrow night. So uh, apparently Green on his podcast took all the blame and said it was his fault and it can't happen. But it did happen. You know, I you have... can't say it can't happen when it did happen. And yeah, you did just... it. There are so many podcasts he's recorded with stuff like that. That would be the issue at this point for me. <laughs> The Sweet 16 of the men's tournament tips off tonight, which makes it a perfect time for a visit from our great friend Jumpin' Jay Billis. Did they really call you Jumpin' Jay at Duke? I suspect they did not. But I remember Jumpin' Johnny Green when I was a fan of the Knicks when I was a kid. Here, let's start with this. UConn and North Carolina are the number one seeds going tonight, Jay. Do you see either one as vulnerable I wouldn't say vulnerable. Uh, I think North Carolina playing Alabama probably has a tougher game of the two because Alabama is one of the top two or three offensive teams in the country. And Mark Sears, their left-handed guard, is averaging over 20 a game and has been magnificent in the tournament. But because Alabama can put so many points on the board, uh, but Carolina's defense has been great all year long, and especially over the last probably half of the season, they've been excellent. I just don't know that as good as San Diego State's defense is, that they've got enough to beat UConn. I mean, UConn's had eight straight games uh, in the NCAA tournament dating back to last year when they won the national championship, where they won by double digits. And nobody's come close to them uh, in, in this tournament. They've blown everybody out. Jay Wilbon has Illinois winning the whole thing. I'm sure his geographic bias is a total coincidence on that front. But I got to ask you, do you see the Illini actually beating Iowa State tonight? I do. Uh, I had uh, Illinois in my bracket, Illinois beating Iowa State to get to the Elite Eight. Uh, Illinois is really good on the offensive end, and they're kind of an isolation team. They don't, they don't run a lot of stuff that uh, is kind of false motion to get into something. They go after the matchup they want, and they do it right away. And with Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, playing at the level he is over his last six games, he's averaging 30 points a game. And then Marcus Domask, who transferred in from Southern Illinois, he's a, an isolation guy that can back you down, and he's a great mid-range player. They, they've just got weapons, and I think Illinois uh, ha has enough to get by. It's the number one offense in Illinois going against the number one defense in Iowa State. You don't see that very often. Yeah, I want to ask about Will Bond's other geographic bias, Arizona and Clemson. I hear some underdogs barking, perhaps. Jay, what do you got between <laughs> Clemson and Arizona, incidentally? Yeah, Arizona is just the stronger team. And I think for Arizona, if they can get out in transition, they're the better transition team. They've got great size. Uh, I, I think Arizona is a very, very difficult matchup for Clemson. Uh, and Caleb Love, who's played Clemson a number of times when he was at North Carolina, uh, he's the best player. He's a, the Pac-12 player of the year. He's the best player uh, that Arizona puts out there. But a guy I would really watch is Pella Larson, uh, who essentially plays the three. Uh, for Arizona. He reminds me a lot of Christian Brown when Kansas won the national championship because he does mm. a little bit of everything. He's not quite as athletic uh, as Christian Brown, but he's a little bit bigger and uh, and he's a he's a great player. He's going to play in the NBA. All right, we will get you out of here on this. I go to the glasses because tomorrow, oh uh, like tonight, we have two number ones. We have two number twos going because the seeding people really did get it right so far. So among Purdue and Houston and Tennessee and Marquette, who do you see as perhaps the wobbliest of those four teams? I would probably, Tony, say Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee's going against Creighton, and Creighton can really score. They've got a big guy named Ryan Kalkbrenner who protects the rim. He's a lob threat, scores really efficiently around the basket, and he never fouls. Uh, you know, he's able to block shots and chain shots without fouling. And if Tennessee doesn't shoot the ball better than they did against Texas, if they play like they did against Texas, Creighton will beat them. And remember, Creighton went to the Elite Eight last year, lost uh, to San Diego State. They got a late foul call that, 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 that tubed the game for them. San Diego State wound up winning it. But they're going to have to score points against Creighton because even against that really good Tennessee defense, Creighton's going to put up numbers. They can really score. 
Was that actually your dog barking in the background? Was that your dog? <laughs> it, was my, it was my dog and then my daughter's dog. And anytime they see anyone walking outside the house, they go nuts. So I'd have to tape all the windows shut in order to get this done in complete silence. <laughs> That's so fabulous. Uh, I got my, we don't allow my dog in the studio, but she's right outside. Thank you so much for being with us as always, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Always. Thank you. Let's take one last break still to come. A-Rod's bid to buy the Timberwolves appears to be off. Really? And Andy Reid, Tony, appears to have a new offensive weapon. I now feel that I could bring my dog, Chessie, yeah, right Chessie. here. And just Chessie now is her jealous. To Total jealousy. Oh, yeah. Chessie has now. That's just, this makes me, people, happy 80th birthday, Rick Barry. Named one of the 75 greatest NBA players of all time. Barry was Rookie of the Year in 1966 for the San Francisco Warriors. He jumped to the Oakland Oaks of the ABA in 1968 because his then father-in-law, Bruce Hale, was going to be the coach. Barry later balked at playing for the Virginia Squires in a famous cover piece in Sports Illustrated and went instead to the New York Nets. Barry jumped back to the NBA in 1972. He was the finals MVP in 1975 when the Warriors swept the Washington Bullets. Barry was a 12-time All-Star, led both the NBA and ABA in scoring. Always a controversial figure, even as a broadcaster. I covered him on the Nets. I found them to be direct, egocentric, generous, and a total delight. So Rick Barry, of course, the granny style free throws, underappreciated. So many more NBA players should have copied him, but he, obviously, Tony, he was before my time. I do remember reading, though, I believe it was 83, a Sports Illustrated article I found once by a writer who also, I think, was described as something like uh, egocentric, brilliant, and a total delight. Ah, and I wonder what happened to that really, guy. Really, really. Huh. Yeah, yeah. whatever happened he, to him? He's sitting here. A oh, not so happy too. anniversary yeah. to the city of Baltimore. On this day 40 years ago, Bob Ursay, the owner of the Baltimore Colts, had 15 green and yellow Mayflower moving vans pull up to the Colts training complex in Owings Mills, Maryland at 2.30 in the morning. As snow fluttered down, all the Colts' memorabilia, merchandise, and memories were loaded into the trucks and driven to Indianapolis. Knowing how Baltimore fans would react, Ursay deliberately fled the city in the wee hours, an unforgivable act. Baltimore was repatriated with an NFL team in 1996, the Ravens, as Art Modell moved the Cleveland Browns to Baltimore, but publicly and not under the cover of darkness. Unforgivable is the right word. This is total, coward total cowardice, I believe, is the term that I was looking for. And if you look at Jim Ursay's Twitter account today, and God bless you, Tony, for never being on Twitter, you'll find him commemorating a surreal night 40 years ago. Glad it worked out for both sides or some such. Maybe just don't tweet that. If you're Jim Ursay, just a thought. Don't tweet anything at all on a day like this. Happy trails to a move to Northern Virginia for the Capitals and Wizards. The owner of these teams, Ted Leonsis, who tried ingloriously to move them out of Washington, D.C., has come back to the district now that the new Golden Palace he sought in Alexandria blew up in his face. Virginia Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin, who conspired with Leonsis, ran into strenuous objections by the Democratic legislature. Leonsis, who originally demanded $600 million in improvements to keep his teams in D.C., yesterday agreed to $515 million improvements and signed a 25-year lease to stay put. So the capital of the United States of America is whole again with hockey and basketball, and Leonsis can work on his reputation, which took a huge and justified hit for his villainy. Mm. You know, the other story I've been monitoring when it comes to NBA owners in this case is Glenn Taylor, who is retaining majority control of the Timberwolves. A-Rod was going to be the guy who got that majority share. Some expiration has passed. And so Glenn Taylor still in the league. Incredible. Let's go to the big finish. Cavs owner Dan Gilbert says he's confident Donovan Mitchell will sign an extension this summer. Are you? I'm not, but I do know what font Dan Gilbert will use if he doesn't resign. Louisville hired Pat Kelsey to replace Kenny Payne. Is that a good fit? He was not their first choice, but he went twice in a row to the NCAAs with Charleston and then twice with Winthrop in one bid leagues. Pretty good. The Chiefs agreed to terms with European rugby star Louis Rees Zamet. Are you intrigued? 
I'm intrigued that he might play receiver or running back. That is interesting to me. The Hornets, meanwhile, are shutting down LaMelo Ball for the rest of the season. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're not going to make the playoffs, and he gets hurt a lot. I mean, he and his brother, they're never healthy. Last one, yeah. Bucks and Pelicans tonight. Are you intrigued? Zion Williamson looks great. He looks healthy. He's bouncy. He's dominant in the month of March. Yes, absolutely. More Zion. This Zion specifically, please. Did I not say College of Charleston? I thought I had. Perhaps I hadn't. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. Scott Richards, shout out. Did you sign I'm Pablo, Pablo Torre. Thank you for watching. This is my show, Pablo Torre Finds Out. Please subscribe. But for now, your sports center. That Sports Illustrated story by that guy was pretty good. I mean, yeah. come on. It was that guy, pretty good, He right? should consider a career in this. This is my first one. Hey, wait, take him. Sit inside. I stand here. You, you, you sit, you sit. You color not there for vehicle. Mm, I have, I have, but you not download. Download not, ah, uh, okay, okay. Where download? Get in the car. I download all resource pack. Why not coming? Mm, then I don't. But this is a uh, old skit. Okay. Yellow color? Orange color? Orange color. Such a worst behavior, da thambi. Yeah, or the Nadula Patiada, Tamil Adin Tanda. How you Raj bro, Michael sound or the bro Hey, somebody ban see that boy. Oh no, 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 Oh, you know, down. No problem. Down floor, can I go? Floor, the other one. Okay, we let's. Uh, okay, we let's check bro. Enemy, enemy, that building. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Be safe. Building, bro. How there? Go now. No, no, you, you stay here itself. I'm carrying a path to the market. Get to the market. Now, I'm going to get a current to Marley. I'm going to get a lot of water. I'm going to get a lot of water. I'm going to get a lot of water. Hello? Tell me, Tom. Why you moot? Awesome. Opposite. He went down a car. Be careful. Awesome. Oh, AW. I got supplies. Seven ammo give. Alpha. I don't have a car. Give it up. No, sir. No, point gun. AW, I don't want. Oh, AW ammo is oh, okay. Zero ammo. I have taken AW. Anybody give 7 ammo, please. 